welcome to another paincast two in one evening guys thanks for being here um, we're going to be working on the signar centurion that i have been uh, putting together for chris we're almost done with it <clears throat> we've painted most of the modular pieces component pieces i've got the legs to work on tonight and i've got a couple other pieces what i want to try and get done tonight is getting those legs finished and then also like going over some assembly stuff um, i do paint um, jacks in pieces so um, I think a tutorial talking about painting jacks also needs to include the assembly part so that that uh, that is helped that, that that's covered and that's gone over with so um, anyway um, I think where I want to start tonight is um, go ahead and, and finishing up the shoulders here so I can get into the assembly this evening and um, you can see that this edge right here is pretty rough because I had masked off this white area um, during airbrushing. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up some of this base color real fast and that is going to then be applied to the model. The base color is approximately one part warm green with two parts Meredith Blue. And you know, Chris, for you, when you uh, get going on your army and painting them, and you're mixing these colors up on your palette and whatnot, don't be so concerned about slight variations in, in, in this color recipe. Um, you know, once your whole army's painted, no one is going to notice if, if the teal turns out a little more blue on some models or a little more green on some models. That's why I'm saying it's approximately. Really, um, you know, when you're dealing with a large, a large amount of models over a large area like that, I don't think, um, I don't think people are going to notice. So. changed my camera angle a little bit and I was before pretty far out now I'm having to be just a little closer which is actually more comfortable in the long run so hopefully I won't have as many off-camera painting mishaps as I was having before I know that that was frustrating to some of you guys and apologize for the lack of my quality lack of having a quality production here low production value we're working on it though we're still in our infancy I've only been doing these paint casts now for about well, probably a month and a week actually not very long so lots of room to grow and grow we will we're going to get a lot better at what we do here as far as the content that we give you guys and, and how that's delivered to you that's going to get a lot better. So, I was actually on a little earlier this evening doing uh, some Cricks stuff with my airbrush. That video should be posted here in the next few days. Uh, it's going to be titled Purple Cricks, so you can watch for that on my YouTube channel. I go over a lot of airbrushing stuff, so if you're interested in learning how to airbrush or interested in airbrushing tutorials, that would be a great place for you to start. Still need to look into some kind of streaming music when I do this. No one's said that the silence is bothering it bothersome, but it kind of bothers me in a way, I guess. I don't know why. It's cool when I have a you know the clients on air with me. It's a lot more interactive and I feel like a lot more learning takes place. But um it's not always feasible to, to have them on so or have clients on. Alright, so we're going to get right into some two brush blending now with, um, with these Centurion legs. And a um, couple things I want to point out though on the model before we get going too far along with it 
is um, the plastic models do lack a little bit of detail. Okay, and um, one of the things that I think can help clean that up a little bit is like in this area right here. So you've got kind of this this uh, this gap here, okay, and then all this flat detail around this little hip joint there. That stuff can all be painted black, okay. Uh, same with on the the lower shin here. You got the piston for the shin, right? And right here next to it on either side of it, you can do that black or that really dark coal black that uh, that we've used a few times, that color. Um, on the bottom of these plates right here, you can do the same kind of color there. All right. So little details like that can help make the jack look a little better detail-wise. I think we're going to keep the legs mostly the teal color. I will paint here white. I'll paint here white. And then these little guards on top of the foot, those will be the metallic gold that we've been using. Okay. So let's get into it. Get my dry palette here. Getting it set up. The shade color we're using Exile Blue with two brush blending. Get my blending brush ready here. When you're two brush blending, Remember to use a dry palette. Don't use a wet palette. You don't want that paint to get too wet. You want to keep control of the moisture value on the paint. If it's too wet, then uh, it's going to dry with the uh, bathtub rings, as they're known, a little too fast. And you don't want that to happen. blue color all the way across, up and down, and just soften that last edge there. Okay. Come on the inside of the thigh. This we can keep a little darker, be a little heavier with it, because it's going to be on the inside where the shadow is. Remember also when you're two brush blending, keep your rinse or your blending brush well rinsed. You don't want to get a buildup of too much color in there. And it might have been a little too moist. But we'll see how it, how it comes out here. Yeah, it's a little too, a little too much moisture there. So I'm going to wipe off bit of this and then re redistribute it. Okay. Having a uh, having a two mixing uh, wells to work with will help a lot with keeping your uh, keeping your brush clean. I've got one that is just clean water. That is kind of the final final rinse, final cleaning on my my brushes and then I've got just kind of a 
general brush well that I use for you know the general rinsing of my brushes. You always want to mix your or rinse your blending brush in that cleaner cleaner pot. Okay. Looking good there. So we're going to have some shadow underneath here now. Work with that a little bit. I may have mentioned this before for the viewers, but Chris also commissioned me to, to paint a galleon for him. I'm not going to be streaming the step-by-step -step on a galleon, because colossals are just massive and they take a lot of time but uh, you will see it on here from time to time uh, particularly when I do specific techniques uh, one technique that I'm itching to kind of demonstrate in these paint casts is uh, working with uh, oil paints using oil paints for um, washes and weathering and things like that so that'll be one thing that I'll, I'll demonstrate live and these paint cast videos they, they, they really differ from from a typical commission type thing because uh, yeah Robert is or I mean Chris uh, is having me paint this for him and and I guess technically that is a, a commission um, but I'm also taking advantage of the opportunity to teach her a little bit too whereas with the galleon I'm just focusing mostly on just the getting it painted aspect that's probably not going to be for a little bit. I've got um, that Cephalex army that I've got to get finished up and uh, got to get a few other things finished. Um, I'm also working on an entry for lock and load. So that'll be done. So my guess is, is uh, after lock and load is probably when I'll be getting started on, on said Galleon. But I'm looking forward to it. Galleon is actually one of my more favorite uh, favorite colossals to paint. That and the Stormwall. really like the Stormwall. Stormwall was the first first ever colossal I painted and uh, uh, fell in love with it quickly. So couldn't play it worth a damn but uh, <laughs> but I loved I loved painting. I've painted a few of those up now. I think I've done maybe four of them, five of them. I don't know. I was mentioning in an earlier paint cast I did today that I've probably painted close to a hundred colossals and uh, Colossals, Gargantuans, and Battle Engines. And that is a, been a lot of plastic and resin to get through. But um, those large base models are fun. They, they present a, a unique painting challenge, that's for sure. I think one of my favorites to paint has been the Archangel. Um, difficult model to paint, but um, man, that, that model and just the pose on it is just so beautiful and the, the, the muscle structure and the anatomy I mean I just stared at that model for ages before I actually started putting you know, brush to paint on that one man because it just was it was phenomenal now one thing I want to do here real quick is I'm going to pull off one of these knee guards and just kind of put it in here because I want to get an idea of, of how much area it covers. Uh, I'm not trying to, to mount it necessarily, I just kind of want to get it to sit there for a second. And it looks like it's not going to stay without glue. But I want to try and get an idea of how much area it's going to cover. Alright, so it looks like I'll need to, to put some shadow probably right down here come up with it I'm thinking on on both sides that'll probably be the best thing to do and I did nick the paint a bit just right there so when I pull my wet palette out I will uh, clean that up
I'm going to want to do a little bit under here, bringing it down. And part of the goal here too, Chris, if you remember right, is we, we're trying to minimize the contrast on um, on the models because we don't want the model to look overly overly dirty. You want it a very bright, very clean type appearance, and so that's what we're trying to maximize here. If we go too much contrast, I personally feel you you run that risk of moving away from that look that you're trying to achieve. So keep the blends small, keep them simple, don't get crazy with them, and that will uh, that'll help contribute to that clean look. You know inside right here where you've got those pistons, um, pistons going, I think what we might do is just wash that whole area with uh, some thinned out exile blue. Not try and get too crazy with the shading there. side now. Lower leg. Pull that paint up to the other side here. Focus seems off a bit. Let me adjust this just a bit, guys. Hold on a second. There we go. That'll work. Okay, as far as two brush, two brush blending on the blue, I think that looks good. Let me set this aside. Pull my wet palette back out here. Grab a little bit of this Exile Blue off my dry palette. Thin this out a bit. Make a little bit of a wash. And we're just gonna just gonna wash into this inside thigh here. Also on the bottom side of this knee. Just to give a little bit of a little bit of shadow down there. Probably do the same thing here. side of this leg here. Okay. Looks pretty good. These pieces back here we're just gonna do those in, in stainless in the uh, cold steel. I think those will be fine like that. Uh, white, Menoth white base we need now to base the white that is going to go on that front piece and, and 
back piece, loin cloth area. Mixing up my paint here. get this uh, white base coated now. I just use the paint that the, the water that moisture that's on the wet palette to, to thin this thin these colors down. One thing we really haven't talked about is applying a base coat with a brush. When you're doing that, you want to keep your strokes smooth and long. Uh, try to avoid, you know, short little quick ones. Smooth and long. And what you want to do is, as the don't worry about trying to get single coat coverage. I mean, you can see still a little bit of the green coat coming through there. You don't want don't don't worry about trying to get it all in one go. Uh, when I come back to apply the second coat here, I'm going to go vertically down this. So you alternate your 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 strokes, you know, first coat stroke horizontally, second coat coat stroke vertically, and kind of switch back and forth that way. And if you've kept your coats thin enough, and you know you're using a, a nice quality decent brush, um, then uh, by the time you're done, you should have a nice clean solid looking coat uh, with with minimal brush brush strokes and my base is coming off of my my tape here knocked it off earlier and it doesn't want to stay now almost there just hold tight a little longer so now this side is dry enough for me to put that second coat on so the first time I went this way so now this time I'm going to go vertically to apply those coats. Also try as much as you can to use the side of the brush. Try not to use the, the tip of the brush when you paint and when you're doing uh, solid base coats like this. That undercoat probably could have dried a little bit longer. So I'm going to let this dry a little bit longer before coming back to it. Now, last time we had talked a little bit about the idea of switching to these uh, scale 75 uh, golds. And I believe the color we used last time was a Viking gold, if I remember right. And I just want to paint the Cygnus now on um, the shoulders. Of the Signar Jack. Sometimes these scale 75 paints, when they come out, uh, they're just a little undermixed still, no matter how much you shake them. So you have to kind of squirt it out and then mix it a little more on your palette there. You can see why I'm digging these metallics so much more over other brands. The coat is so smooth and it just looks great on that single, that first single coat.
really does. Set that aside to dry. Come work on the other arm now. Other shoulder, rather. And we're going to two brush blend some shading and highlights on the on this shoulder here. Just a moment once we get these colors, these gold colors set. painting the uh, silver now, the cold steel color. That'll go in the uh, shoulder joint there. Uh, not quick silver, cold silver. Grab the right one. We're going to paint silver here is this studded plate on top, this studded plate here on top of the shoulder, uh, the big uh, lag screws there, and then just this whole ball joint there. And we're just going to cover that nice and even. Again, don't worry about trying to get single coat coverage when you're doing a base coat. All we're trying to get right now is just a, a solid coat. Across the top there. All right, get this back side here now. this top plate. Just focus on staying in the lines, Chris. Now that's something that we've talked about on a couple of these now between Iris Kane and, and now the the Centurion. You know, that's a an issue you've mentioned to me that you an area that you struggle with is you know keeping those paint lines clean. And you know like I said, focus on that breathing. Focus on keeping the calm, steady, even breaths, and that will help you stay re calm and relaxed, calm and steady when you're putting your, applying your, your actual base coats to the model. Something else to, to remind you of, Chris, 
I know we haven't had you on since we finished Iris. I might have had you on for part one of Kane. I can't recall. But, um, you know, part of what you are getting with, with this PaintCast tutorial is, um, you know, some Google chat time with me. So once you get these models back in your hand, once you get these color recipes back in your hand, and you have questions on them, um, you, you've got that time to to call me up on Google Chat or you know schedule an appointment with me on on Google, or time with me on Google Chat, and uh, and we'll talk about it. You know, we can answer your questions further. You know, you're struggling with getting a paint mix right or something like that. You know, we'll figure it out. Um, I, I do that because you know, like I've mentioned before, and I've, and I've mentioned on on the notes on my Facebook Facebook page. I'm, I'm honestly interested, sincerely interested in helping people be better painters. You know, teach a man to paint, paint a mini for a man, and you've given him one one figure for his army. Teach a man to paint, and he can paint his entire army, right? Something along those lines. And so, you know, just sitting here for these few hours on these videos with you and, and providing you these details, that's not enough. You know, there has to be that follow up. There has to be that 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 access or that that way that when you get going and you're practicing it on your own and you have a question that you can um, find that answer you're looking for and that's what that that Google chat chat time is for is is for you to uh, you know get that extra follow-up really something I probably should have had done beforehand but I think that uh, any discussion on properly applying a base coat is a good discussion because uh, I think that's one area that gets brushed to be honest and can look pretty bad and I don't know what it is about metallics but for me in my experience I've always found metallics to be a bit for uh, a bit forgiving when it comes to brush strokes, brush strokes and the like. Um, they uh, tend not to show up as readily, uh, which I think is a great thing. <laughs> and um, I mean, obviously, you can do things to make them more interesting, but you know, when you're just trying to get your army on the table and you're trying to get things done quick with metallics a base coat and a wash you're there man maybe a dry brush or picking out the highlights with you know a, a brighter colored metallic but you know metal uh, metallics in general when talking about uh, tabletop quality are definitely an area that you can save time when you're painting your army that's a, that's a good thing to to remember good thing to keep in mind set that aside this one definitely needs a couple a couple more coats or at least another one the other so shoulder so we're gonna get in there and throw that on there and the wash we're going to use to uh, cover this up when we're done again is the the secret weapon miniature wash and that's just going to give a, a little bit of more of a warm tone to the metallic so that it um, contrasts nicely with um, the cool colors that you got going on here so pretty good. I don't think I need to touch up too much more on this one. So we're just going to let that one dry for a bit. Let's come back and check these whites out here. Make sure these are uh, good to go.
get my second layer of white rock in here. And I believe I went this way last time. So we'll try and go vertical all the way around. Get inside those vent holes or, or whatever they are. that white is drying. Knock out some of this gold trim here real quick. Last time we talked a little bit about black lining. This is a great area to do this, do that, do that at when you're working on your other jacks, Chris. This nice, soft, smooth line right there between the trim of the armor plate and the uh, uh, armor plate itself. It'll break it up a little bit, and it'll help help it pop a little bit too. So uh, armor plate down here needed that. That's probably going to need another coat. That's fine. A little bit of paint build up in the corner here, so I'm just going to pull that out. A lot of that will be covered by the black line that I put on here. So, not too worried about it. I just don't want it sticking, sticking out too far on the plate. Okay. So for those of you that follow along, or that have, you know, been following along in these videos, or that uh, check me out on Facebook, you know that uh, I've been painting um, and you know uh, slowly transitioning over from Menoth uh, to Circle. Well, I've got an update on that, and I've actually stopped 
transitioning over. I'm um, staying with Menoth. Uh, reason being, not that I don't like Circle or not that I'm going to get rid of my Circle army, but uh, I really need to learn this game better. And uh, hopping around on a different faction is not going to help me learn the game better from a rules standpoint. And then I spend so much time painting that I get so little time actually playing. I need to make sure that the time that I do play is uh, is quality time. So that means um, playing a faction that I'm well versed in, or better versed in rather, and um, willing to uh, to take some risk and try some new new things with. So. So I'm going back to Menoth. I'll still play Circle on occasion, I'm sure, you know, as time permits. But uh, really, I'm going to focus on focus on on playing them, and you know, just from a rules perspective, really try and, and understand the game better, and make sure that uh, it's just more of a positive positive experience for me all around in that regards. So I'm going to try a new caster. I uh, still think I'm going to drop. P. Krios on a regular basis. I just love that guy. Pop and drop, pop and drop is legit. Um, but I'm gonna try the Harbinger. I'm gonna start working her. I think I've not played her at all, hardly since uh, starting to play Menoth. Shocking, I know. Um, but uh, I think it's time to to start to start giving that caster a go. The other caster that I'm going to start focusing on too as I start slowly moving away from uh, Krios is going to be Severius, uh, P. Severius. I, I really like him as well. I have Menoth is fantastic. I have Menoth and Defender's Ward uh, is just crazy. So a lot of people don't, I notice, don't run him too much with Blessing of Vengeance. But uh, I'm I'm thinking I might I might try and give that a go and uh, build a list that uh, has blessing of vengeance in it and and can allow him to to abuse ashes to ashes. Not a hundred percent reliable, I know, but uh, still a cool idea idea and. Uh, at least in theory, it does work. So, but it's gonna be a while before I paint anything new for my Menoth army. This is uh, taking up a considerable amount of my time, and right now at the beginning, and uh, there's some other commission projects I gotta get finished up before I I start focusing more fully on the paint cast. So, you know. Just a little bit at a time, and that's fine enough. My Menoth army is painted for me to to enjoy it anyway. And uh, these figures, these casters that I want to try out that are new, and maybe some units that are new, I'll, I'll just assemble them and just paint them a little bit at a time. Won't try and focus on knocking out a, a whole unit at once, like I've done in the past. One area that we did not do any shading is here on this armor plate on the back and then here on this armor plate on the front. So we will be doing a little bit on that. So then I finish out this gold trim here. I'm just gonna need another coat. Okay, uh, armor plate. Got my dry palette here. Mixing brush. Okay, where are you guys at? There you are, right there.
a little too much blue, so I'm going to wipe, wipe some of that off. But I'm going to kind of spread it what's left over the whole, whole plate here because it's pretty heavily in shadow. And uh, I'll start with a little bit here. Pull it down. Here at the top. And spread that across the whole edge there. And then pull it down. And same thing here. wiping before the paint, pushing into the paint, and then slowly pulling out from the paint. And then on this bottom here, we'll put the black, or the coal black right inside there. Okay, I think uh, one more coat of white ought to do us. Give us a nice solid base coat there. It's a two brush blend on and highlight. Some good looking colors together, man. Reminds me of my Manoth army a lot. All right, what I'm going to do now, Chris, um, is I'm going to talk a little bit about assembly here, real quick, just because I want to make sure and, and cover that with you, so that way you're not left left in the lurch uh, about what you need to do there. I think everything is coated enough that um, uh, I can get into the areas I need to get into uh, to make work. So Now, some of these parts are not going to need to be pinned um, because of how uh, they were designed. They actually will hold together pretty, pretty darn well. Um, the shoulders, for example, I think will be fine. I don't think you're going to need to pin those. Um, the arms are not going to be, uh, the forearms to the, to the uh, elbow joints are not going to be, need to be pinned, but I would recommend that we pin uh, the elbow joints uh, to the ball joints um, on, uh, on the shoulders. So the first thing to do is um, put the torso on. So. Uh, Add a drop of your CA right there, and just plop that down right on top of there. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to give that torso just a slight twist. You can see right there. This will give him a little bit more of an action type pose. Okay, I'm offsetting the shoulders from the from the legs. So this leg is set back, so this shoulder will be set forward, so it will give convey a sense of motion and movement to the model. So this arm here will have, want to have going forward, this arm here we're going to want to have going back slightly. So while that is setting, let's get the uh, elbow joints into these uh, forearm sockets. 
that's just going to be a you know drop of paint there and then make sure you match up the right elbow socket with the right forearm like so okay and the same thing here and I think what you're hopefully seeing Chris in doing this is you're seeing a much cleaner looking final product um, you don't have any paint where it shouldn't be um, everything is clean it's joining up together you know um, they look looks clean it looks high quality okay and that's what we're that's what we're trying to go for here right that was the uh, the end goal so uh, now in the shoulder here add your glue and then remember this joint we want to twist forward ever so slightly and give it a hold for a few seconds okay same thing on the other side but this one we're going to twist back ah didn't let it dry long enough oh it didn't even seat right now that was the problem on that one yeah. advantages of a live show right there you get to see mistakes when they happen and that is kind of a good thing actually because it helps helps you when when those when those mistakes happen so again back to uh, to this shoulder this one we want to have twisting backwards ever so slightly okay let that glue sit up for a minute now the head we've got the head right here um, what I'm proposing is instead of having the head instead of having the head pointing the direction that the jack is moving let's have the head pointing the other direction as if he's moving forward but looking back those two directions move those two angles moving in opposite directions are going to give the, the the jack a sense of movement so the way we'll do that if I can pick it up with my fingers I've got some pinning rod here uh, I've already got a hole drilled in the head there. In fact, I think this is the wrong size rod. I think this one's too small. Yep, that one. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just enlarge this hole just a little bit more just so it sits sits in there nicely I don't want it to be too snug okay probably the one thing we could have done that we didn't that I didn't do was paint this metal right inside here but that's okay I can still get to that reasonably well for you on your jacks <laughs> uh, make sure you paint the that metal torso first so that way um, it's not an issue for you and the glowing effect there on the eye too will take care of that here in just a minute or before it's actually finished up Now, since I want to convey some movement with that head, I'm kind of bending the rod a little bit there. Okay. Let's see what we get here. 
So he's looking a little straightforward right now. So I'm going to pull that out and work this hole just a little bit more to try and give me that angle that I'm wanting. Just using my pin vise here. Don't be afraid to, to work around the model. Anything you nick or scratch or rub off at this point, very easily replaced. <laughs> We're not doing uh, showpiece models here. We're just doing uh, regular, nice, solid tabletop quality. So there we go. His head's now a little bit more offset now. Let me give you the fix the focus there. Okay. So now the head's a little more offset. So you're getting that, that sense of movement a little bit more. So we want to set that now. So I'll pull that out. Drop a glue in there. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and set the knee pads while I'm at it. Armor pads on the knees. Sounds better. Knee pads sounds like something you would wear in soccer. And I know nothing about the game of soccer, so I suppose I shouldn't be knocking it too much. There's one there. Get the other one here. come together now. Starting to look like a jack. Alright. Uh, the uh, white armor pieces for the chest, let's get these set. These will still need to be um, painted of course, um, but I wasn't sure what the exact orientation was on them so I didn't want to get too crazy with them. It looks like this one goes on this side. And hopefully I did not make a mistake by putting that shoulder in first. That's now oh, we're good. Okay. you're going to build your jacks this way, Chris, you really need to make sure you dry fit everything first. So it does take a little more time, but as you can see how clean the model looks in the end, it really pays off. So, and this guy's looking, looking pretty dang good. Okay, so this is going to be our shield arm here. And we're going to put this one forward a little bit more. And then this one's going to be our spear arm. And this one's going to be set back just a little bit. So the tops insides there are already drilled. So we need to kind of eyeball where this is going to be on this arm here and uh, set a hole. Just using the pin vise. Don't need to go super deep. No more than an eighth of an inch at the most I would think. It's just uh, to help anchor the piece in while the glue sets. This is one nice thing too about P3 paints. Um, they're quite durable. I haven't sealed this model 
at all. I haven't added any varnishes or anything like that because um, it doesn't need it at this point, honestly. Um, I know a lot of people that do varnish, and I varnish models on occasion. And uh, P3 paint is just real durable in that respect. Holds up really well. You see how short that pen is there? Not very long at all. Going to uh, add a little glue there now. Line the hole up. And like so. And I actually eyeballed that pretty well. Okay. And we can add the shield to it right away. The hands already have some decent little knobs on the end, so I don't think uh, pinning wouldn't be necessary there. Give that a second to set. Leading with the shield. Looking good there. And uh, the last arm now. This one's going to be back here a bit, which is going to put us, put me a hole right about there, I imagine. Set my pin here. A little bit of glue. And there's our More or less, it's going to be our final pose. Here is the uh, the spear, and I actually I, don't, I can't remember if I um, had mentioned this before or not in part one or two, but I've actually mod modded this spear a little bit. I took about a quarter inch of length out of it, uh, so it's just a little bit shorter, so it's not quite so cumbersome on the table when you're um, uh, lining him up with other models. So. Um, I just basically cut the hand off and then cut the the shaft a little shorter and then ran a, a wire through the whole thing. So it's in there quite solid. I'm going to let this sit overnight before I touch it anymore uh, for everything to to set. But there is your your final pose and part four is going to be all the cleanup detail that's going to happen so there you go Chris your centurion he is almost done part four we will finish up all those small little details and uh, I'm going to get these guys wrapped up and finished and back to you just as soon as I can so you can get going on your own army thank you for everyone else who is checking this out on YouTube if you like what you've seen today, make sure to please hit like, uh, like to like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, 
feel free to contact me at redmodeling at gmail.com or you can reach me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash redmodelingpaint. Everyone have a good night. We'll talk to you later.